Let's go eh. If you know, it just I will just prompt you. Yeah, okay. okay. One, two, three. Action. For this up, guys, Fan here with Za once again, and we have Joel once again. And uh, this is Joel's third bike, the Honda CBR 1000 RR. Eh. Mm -hmm. And um, this was the bike that made me want to contact Joel. Eh. Because <laughs> it was featured on SG Insta Bikes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I actually contacted Joel, requested that, you know, maybe we can do an interview, and he agreed. Lah. How long have you been riding this bike, Joel? Uh, I bought it new in 2017, August, October. October lah. Yeah. yeah, so it was pre-registered before ARF. Mm. Oh, ARF, the ARF year. This is yeah. this is a very very beautiful bike, you know. You know <laughs> the with your custom decals, custom you know, decal, it, it really but makes stands out. Credits stuff. to Man from Custom Studio. Ah, yeah. we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So uh, before Joel actually tells the story about his uh, Honda CBR 1000 RR, uh -huh. uh, we're gonna give a bit of background about it. Developed with racing in mind. The Honda CBR 1000 Double R has a reputation for being a track-focused machine with the performance and handling to match. Joel's model is a 2017 model, the fifth generation. To coincide with the 25th anniversary of the Fireblade, the fifth generation was updated with new bodywork and performance features of the time. Engine for this variation is a 998cc liquid-cooled inline 4-cylinder DOHC with dual-stage fuel injection and a 6-speed manual transmission. Those superbikes are an uncommon sight in Singapore. The CBR 1000 RR is one of the few mainstream models on the roads. So Joel, why did you bought uh, this bike? Uh, you know Honda reliability. Uh, maintenance wise, I think it's a bit cheaper than the other super bikes. Uh -huh. uh, it's only 2.7 litre engine oil capacity, so maintenance, routine maintenance will be cheaper. Uh -huh. uh, parts are a bit more readily available because you know it's a Honda. Okay. Um, and I got a not bad deal on the bike. So it came so if you want to ask me how much it is, is it I bought it at 41.5 Are you the first owner? Or first, owner. first owner First owner First owner uh -huh. uh, And 41.5 came with the number plate Which is a wow. two digit plate Wow, wow. Yeah. Nice. So Cool man Yeah so <laughs> nice. I thought it was a good deal and um, You jump on it lah I heard Hondas are easy to live with lah so mm. yeah. You, you yeah. cannot go wrong with a Honda you know Yeah with Honda, Yamaha So far during the three years has it been good to you? Has it uh, any yeah. problems so Ge far? Generally good to me. Uh -huh. uh, so far, no issues. Only issues uh, that plate the bike of this model. I'm not sure about the previous generation of the blade. Mm -hmm. Is the cam cam chain tensioner mm -hmm. periodically gets loose and needs replacement every fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. or less, a bit less. So you start to hear when you rev it, you start to hear a rattling noise at the engine. It's just mm -hmm. the cam chain tensioner that needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it replaced at the agent for about 180. 180. Ah, agent, I see, I see. agent. Speaking of agent, right? This bike, when you need to change parts or do yeah. everything, do you go to like can the you know typical ape ape bike shop can do it or you do you need to go to specific bike shops? Yeah. Uh, I I try to go to a bike that bike shop that's a bit more experienced mm. with dealing with these kind of bikes. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, anyway, I don't want to waste the uncle 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 shop time because if <laughs> they have to figure out that's time on their end, so they mm -hmm. can service other bikes. Mm. Mm. So I think it's a bit fair to them if I go to somewhere else also because it's it's faster they can service more bikes that they're, they're familiar with. Mm. Mm. I see, yeah. I see. True, so true, true. normally I would major problems I will go to the agent which is Bunsu. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, regular oil change and. Like probably cable tension, all this kind of mm -hmm. mini, uh, minor stuff. I normally mm -hmm. go to Bear's Garage, owned mm -hmm. by Hakim. Ah, ah yeah. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. So previously, before this bike, yeah. what are other bikes? Uh, have you rode? Uh, I mean, besides your Phantom, yeah. Yeah. any other uh, class two bikes that you have rode before? Mm. Uh, uh, S1000 about the BMW. Uh -huh. The bike is, of course, definitely you can feel it's more powerful. Mm. It's more linear. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely heavier. I'm talking not the 2020 on the brief, the, the older generations. It's uh -huh. heavier. But I think in terms of if you want to bring it to the track, mm -hmm. I personally feel a lighter bike would be better for corners because mm -hmm. there's more corners and straights in the track. Mm. So, so yeah. you you mentioned track. Do you go to track with this? Yeah. So actually, I take this bike to the the track at Sepang. Uh -huh. uh, wow, okay. I think, uh, this is the this <laughs> this bike is fun to ride on uh, Sepang. Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, okay. so yeah, we, we gotta talk about that man. About because yeah. so yeah. far we have not interviewed any riders who go to track. Mm. So this uh. is a really really interesting topic, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure many of our uh, our viewers out there 
would love to hear stories on the track. So um, you mentioned you wrote the BMW S1000, right? How would you compare it to the S1000 and the uh, uh, CBR 1000R? R. R. <laughs> this is the double R. The, 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 before the triple R. Uh, this is the first generation that Honda has the electronic throttle. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's as smooth as the BMW. Ah. So in terms of smoothness of the throttle, I think the BMW is a bit better, mm. smoother. Mm. Uh, BMW does run a bit hotter. It's a bit heavier. Mm. But in terms of power, okay, if on the streets, right? Yeah, the mm. BMW is faster. Mm. But I think uh -huh. in terms of the corners, this is a bit better. In my opinion, like, in my opinion, mm. having ridden both mm -hmm. bikes. Honestly, if you ask me, I would prefer this because mm -hmm. it's lighter. Um, it's smaller mm. so it's a bit easier to maneuver around the bike ah. yeah. and how do you compare this to your ducati triple nine ah. oh okay ah. so uh <laughs> having ridden that for a week i mean like what, what i mean what i tell my girlfriend uh this is like a very it's a precision trumpet Mm -hmm. So it's electronic transport, it's very smooth, it's very precise, it's very tuned. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of electronics to help you out to make sure you play your tune very well. Mm -hmm. The Ducati is like a disorganized band of people <laughs> playing music and going down the street. <laughs> and everybody's looking at you and wondering what the hell is that. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a good analogy. It's not, as, it's, it's not as gonna be as precise as this, uh -huh. for sure, because this has all the electronic stuff to mm -hmm. help you out. Uh, um, but that is like a party on wheels. <laughs> uh, this is just a sol solo instrument. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, if I were to put it in an analogy, la, that would be my analogy. Uh, okay. yeah. But like you say, uh, this uh, between the Ducati and uh, this one, the, this has all the electronics stacked on it. Uh. Yes. Yeah. So I think in terms of electronic, definitely this helps you out on the on the road as well. La. Oh, definitely. The traction control mm -hmm. uh, helps you just in case there's an oil slick on the road and then mm -hmm. you accelerate and then it will catch you, prevent you from sliding, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So it has a lot of adjustable power modes, three power mm -hmm. modes, mm -hmm. um, one, two, three, nine levels of traction control, three levels of engine braking control. Mm -hmm. ah. um, it has wow. a gear indicator, I like the Ducati. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also the fuel indicator. indicator. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they want to be important. Okay, okay. To be fair, it doesn't really have a fuel indicator per se. Mm -hmm. It's more like uh, it tells you this trip how much fuel you have used. Ah. So you know that you have 12 liters uh, before his reserve, so 16 liters, right? Mm -hmm. 12 liters, then 4 liters reserve. So you know, it'll tell you this trip, okay, how many liters you have used. So you know you're gonna run out. Ah, I see. Yeah. So talking about fuel, how is the consumption like? Okay, so one full tank is uh, mm -hmm. 16 liters, but normally you don't reach until reserve. Uh -huh. Normally, la, mm -hmm. so 12 liters of fuel gets me about 180 to 210 kilometers, which will cost you about, if you pump 98, it will cost you about 23 to 28 dollars, depending on how much discounts you so get. So maybe un go on Team Laka, then you have to pump. <laughs> uh, I will normally pump, yeah. Yeah, Grand Pata one time, mm -hmm. Pago one time, then Malacca. Ah, I yeah. see. Well, all of the mainstream uh, stops, uh, <laughs> for food and what Correct, have you. correct, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I know you went touring with this, uh, and uh, also you play at uh, Sepang. Yeah. How is your experience like on the track with this bike? Uh, this, track is, uh, this track, this bike is very precise. So where you want to point it, it will go. Mm -hmm. it's, it leans over very easily and then it stays there. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it it kind of coddles you a lot because it saves you from being such to be such to need to be such a pro rider. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, I think I fell once on the bike. Uh -huh. you see the yeah, engine case like right there, yeah, yeah. on the track. It was so, a low side. So what what happened? What happened? Uh, uh, my God, did your heart jump or not when you were like involved in the accident? <laughs> I think it happened so fast because uh -huh. you, you wouldn't know. I think I, if I want, I can send you the video. Uh, yeah. So it was turn fifteen. Uh, I uh -huh. was uh, trying to get my elbow on the ground. Uh -huh. So we were, get, we were cornering at turn 15, right? But it was, I think it was a positive camber, so the slope is going up a bit. Uh -huh. So the first time I got my elbow down, I was like, wow, so happy, first time, you know? <laughs> the second time I come round the second lap, I tried to get my elbow down, touching is not enough, so I wanted to press my elbow on the ground. Mm. So I think I went too far, and then when I got out of the corners, uh, the handlebar, so it was this way, right? So the handlebar slipped this way, mm -hmm. just slide away from me. Wow. Yeah, you can see in the video was, when was, I send you. you was see. the damage just really bad? It being a Honda, uh -huh. mm. pick up and go. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> because you know lah, you we always watch uh, uh, what MotoGP yeah. on the race. You know when they crash, they, they really crash. You know, really? I want to know was it really that bad? Okay, so when you mm -hmm. uh, the bike slid away from me, uh -huh. went into the grass patch area. Uh -huh. So you went in, 
So there was a mount, there's a sand mount, so it slide mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. hit the sand mount, then it, it went up huh? and it poop went the other side. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, what the damages was a broken, one broken side mirror, mm -hmm. uh, broken foot pack, mm -hmm. just the rear set half was broken. Uh -huh. The engine case uh, took most of the damage, some scratches to the fairing. That's other about it. Other than it? Oh. Nothing. Okay. So, and it started on the first try after I picked it up, so. So continue ah, continue. Uh, no, continue. Uh, that was the last session and last lap. Oh. Uh, so it was quite a uneventful uh, way so to you, end. You the back in Malaysia lah. No, actually, uh, you came I back wrote. Singapore. I wrote back with all the damages. Oh my gosh! Uh. Okay. <laughs> I wrote back from KL. You. I wrote back from KL. So yeah. So talking about uh, track, right? Yeah. How often do you go to track? Uh, I tried it. Now, now that we already, you know, COVID, COVID. Yeah. and the uh, lockdown, yeah. borders are closed. So before that. How often do you go to track? And how much do you actually spend each time you go to track? Okay, so I'll try to go track at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Try lah, once a year. Mm -hmm. um, how much it will cost? Okay, first you need to do a lot of things. I mean, personally, mm -hmm. safety is very important for me. Yeah. Especially when you're going fast, you need to be able to stop. Uh -huh. So you need to check your brake fluids. If you need to change, I put Brembo brake fluid inside. So it's mm -hmm. about $100 for the bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I changed tires, so depending on what tires, maybe this S set of S22s I went on Sepang the last time. Mm. So this S22s I bought it new at 388. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, engine oil definitely change. You can really see uh, he corner he corner baring, you know, Malaysia yeah, he corner the, baring. This side, okay, so <laughs> this side you can't you can't see this side that much, right? Because um it's slide this way, so it rubbed away all the, the rubber, but uh. you can see on this side. Uh. This side is the one that is still oh left, left the rubber gosh. piece. Uh. So <clears throat> engine oil change. Um, brake pad check, if brake uh -huh. pad need to replace is about $150. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I think track preparation wise can set you back between three to 400. Mm -hmm. It's safety, all oh, this is safety, like, not uh -huh. doing exhaust and anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just safety checks. And then <clears throat> petrol there. So petrol there, I think you you know, la, should, mm -hmm. you know should set me back about $20, $30 worth of fuel there. Mm -hmm. Track session, if you want to go for one whole day, by half day, midday, your fuel will finish already from fuel tank. Mm -hmm. So you need to pump twice or three times. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, one after the track day mm -hmm. to ride back. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Then accommodation, if you stay Airbnb, Airbnb, if you bundle together with other guys, you can get it cheaper. If, mm -hmm. you, if not, if you stay, actually Airbnb in KL, if you find the right Cheap. places, it's not expensive. Uh. Mm. Yeah, what about the suit? 20, oh, okay, the suit, I bought it a long time ago when I tracked my RC, KTM uh -huh. RC. Mm -hmm. At Pasir Gudang. So that one I bought it with the helmet with the suit gloves was 1.5. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then the boots, so I bought it second hand, mm. 200. Mm. So um, going to track is not uh, cheap. Uh, yeah. You really need. need uh, yeah. You, if you go every, if you go more than once a year, uh, you really need to spend quite a fair bit, in my opinion. Uh -huh. uh, if you don't want to scream on maintenance, uh, you want to really save the engine. But of course, when you go to the track, you don't, oh, well, because I sign an engine, uh -huh. you won't get fun if you want to sign an engine. Uh -huh. you, when you go, you really need to guess. Because mm -hmm. a bike like this, uh -huh. there's no relative, there's no power before 10,000, before 8,000, 9,000. You really need to get it up to 10, 14,000 RPM. Uh -huh. Mm. So that's up to the limits, ah, I see, mm. And it's a different animal. Once you get it up to ten thousand to fourteen k rpm, huh. the acceleration is you will oh. smile in the helmet. <laughs> Seriously, you will smile in the helmet. Yeah, and then oh. the braking, uh -huh. the G force when it comes to braking in mm -hmm. main street from two hundred ninety, you you jam the brakes, you feel the bike, the whole bike diving, mm -hmm. and you feel like you're squishing the tire on the, the tarmac. Mm -hmm. it's just the G force is just it will just try to push you off the bike. Oh. It's a it's a very very visceral feeling. Yeah. Something you cannot ever get in Singapore was because it's too dangerous to what? ever go at this the, the way he, he you know, you do it. The way you describe, describe uh, it's like, <laughs> hey, wow, best. Uh, I, yeah, I, I really want to try, want to try uh, but I want to try my AC750. <laughs> yeah, because you're <laughs> so passionate. You are so passionate about the track, the race, you know, yeah. everything. Wow. I so, mean. yeah, the main trade is like maybe uh, you break at like maybe 150 uh -huh. miles. So, you got 150 meters to go from 290 uh -huh. to 90. Mm. Mm. So you really oh. gotta get the brakes on and then you really gotta trail brake into the corner. Uh, okay, besides the safety uh, replacement, mm. any other uh, tuning or configuration that you had to do to your bike just to make it race ready? Uh, I, I wouldn't say race ready, more like track ready because uh -huh. I think for me, if you watch a lot of track videos, suspension is very important. Mm -hmm. So I just tune the suspension a bit. I went to SBR, they helped me tune the suspension, mm -hmm. uh, make it stiffer because I'm very heavy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then um, my, le my reach is quite long, so mm -hmm. the original handlebars the angle was like that. Oh. So it was like it was like that. Uh, 
So mm. I'm a bit, my, my body's a bit longer, so I shifted the handlebars angle outwards a bit. Ah, so now it's okay. a bit, so I can stretch a bit forward. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, other than that, um, the stop brakes on this bike, I think for most Japanese bikes, the stock brakes are not very good. Mm. They have thing the brake, they have brake fade, especially under high heat. You keep braking, accelerating, braking, accelerating. The brake will fade. So I changed to a Brembo Corsa Corta Master Pump. Mm -hmm. uh, that set me back about five fifty, mm. but it was worth it because the first track session I went, I had brake fade at turn one. Yeah. Turn one is the main straight. You're going at two hundred uh -huh. plus to con to to stop from two hundred ninety to ninety. Uh -huh. Imagine the brakes right went from you can squeeze the brakes right to nothing <gasps> wow Oof. so i squeezed the brakes right there and it was stock brake fluid also yeah. uh. so i think the brake fluid boil until like water uh -huh. so there's no hydraulic there's nothing so i literally press the brake lever like to the handlebar yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, clutch. like a clutch <laughs> so, Holy shoot, man. so i it was very scary because it was a shit in your pants moment you were going so fast <laughs> <laughs> you down you had to downshift as quickly as possible jam the the rear, rear brake and use engine, engine brake. brake. Uh. You had to use engine brake. Shit, I went into the gravel, but luckily the bike was upright. Oh, lucky, sir. <laughs> it's really scary. From then on, the next track sessions, I changed the brake fluid. Changed the master pump. And the brake fit soft uh -huh. really. But I'm not a pro rider. Yeah. Pro riders will probably need a, a lot more. Uh. I, for me, this is sufficient. Mm. The safety is important. I, I don't really bother about the exhaust and the mm. engine. Mm -hmm. The bike is fast enough. Uh. The, bike is, <laughs> the bike is fast enough. Uh. It's up to the rider. I thought you mentioned you actually uh, you had an accident on his bike. Uh. Yeah. You never feel heart pain, man. Okay, so um, when we go to the track, mm -hmm. or when I go to the track, I feel like uh, I should not have much mechanical sympathy. Mm. I, I don't want to say I don't take care of the bike. I really make sure everything I maintain well. But mm. when I go on a track, you need to be prepared that you will fall. Ah. Uh. If you're not going to prepare for that, you just want to play, then it's fine. But if you really want to test the limits of the bike, you mm. need to be prepared that you might fall. Mm -hmm. and so when that happened, it was like, okay, I kind of expected this. Ah. So I see. It is, it is part and parcel of playing the track. Mm. It's part and parcel of testing the limits of the bike, mm. how far you can lean. And then that also translates to you being a better rider on the road. Mm, I see. You I know see. the limits of the bike better. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, oh, this is the maximum I can break. Any more, I think something will happen or I'm not used to it. Mm -hmm. And this is the hardest I can accelerate. If anything, I got in a sticky situation between two cars, this is the hardest I can accelerate. How do I take a corner well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the process, you also learn more about your machine. Nah. Mm. Correct, yeah, and you, in fact, I think more than learning about the machine, you learn about yourself. Mm. You learn about your riding abilities, you learn about... It. Actually, on the road, I didn't, wasn't this confident. Uh. After the track, I took this corner at this speed. Yeah, actually, I feel like maybe when on the road, after you ride, when you come back, a lot of people feedback. I got a lot more confident in the corners. Oh, I think I need to go to track. Uh. I also want to go to track. <laughs> I also want to go to track. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but our machine is uh, more yeah, like for touring. More, more for touring. Uh. Mm. Having said that, there are huh. people with GS. Serious? FZ1N uh -huh. on Sepang. <laughs> Okay, I, I do not know how they the actually. The one end guys, uh, the guy who rode the FZ one end uh -huh. was faster than some of the sports bike riders. Serious? Well, wow. well, in Malaysia there is with Kapchai, so no, the FZ one end is a Singaporean guy. Singaporean guy, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about the rider. I think most of the times, because people, it's always about like your mm. the purpose of your reviews. You don't really want to always hear about facts, technical mm -hmm. facts. You mean yeah. you interview your the fellow community riders. You want to learn about on the ground reviews. You know, mm. you know? mm, yes. So as much as comparing. CBR S1000 Kawasaki, I mean, it's a never ending comparison. Horsepower, who got more, top mm. more, okay, I got more power. But in the end, it's really about the rider. Yeah. Mm, you see, true. like MSBK, Zakwan Zadi, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I pronounce his name correctly. He's riding a CBR, the CBR is known to be the least amount of power compared to uh -huh. others, so like, but he's always winning. Mm. Mm. So I think it's always about the rider and whatever bike. Most importantly, when you buy the bike, you must really like it. Yes, yeah, true, true, it's correct. True. I, I always say this, buy the bike that you love. Yeah, don't yeah. buy based on the reviews, tell you, okay, this bike is more power, this is better. People poison yeah. you. Uh. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> people poison you, in the end, you cannot pay for it. Yes. You know, you cannot yeah. pay for the maintenance, you cannot pay for the correct. fuel, yeah. you know, it's it defeats the purpose. And then you will hit your machine also. Yes, yeah, true. So buy what you, buy what you like. Uh. Okay, so Joel, being a super bike, right, how's the maintenance like? Is it on the high side? No, actually, not that bad. Mm. Um, Engine oil probably sets you back. One servicing maybe sets you back about ninety to hundred dollars. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, it's cheap. Three to five k, yeah. I will change lah. Or every four months, it doesn't really hit lah. So every 
This year I've only ridden about 1,000 kilometers on this bike. Mm. Really, the borders are not open. There's really nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I mean, the, the nearest you can get is, uh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the the K1, KF, K, K, yeah, they have track KF1. Uh, yeah, they have track the the sing, sing, single track. Singa Moto. Ah, Singa Moto, yes, <laughs> correct. Singa Moto, they always have uh, track days at the K, KF1. KF1. K1. <laughs> K1, 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 K1 track, yeah. It's so, a go-kart track, lah. Mm. But having said that, it's mm. that that setup that Singamoto did, mm-hmm. right? It's a very, very good starting ground for people who want to go on the track. Ah. Because you can bring smaller bikes. You can even bring the tourism. You can bring uh, not NC70. Yeah, so the smaller bike, smaller bike. Kapchai. <laughs> not really a Kapchai. Uh-huh. 390, even the FZ. <laughs> Um, smaller bikes, just get on a suit, get some basic gloves on. Mm-hmm. If you fall, it's not going to be a high speed fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? I see, I see. Ah, you got the experience, see. okay, this is how it's like cornering. This is how like taking the, the, what, the, the corner. At the end of the main street, how I break. How does it feel like breaking very hard? It, things like that. So the Singamoto track day, I think, is a very good way for people to start. Introduce it to the uh, track scene. Ah, I see. I yeah, see, and it's see. not an expensive entrance fee. It's and the time all- allocated is sufficient, in my opinion. I have not gone, but I see the way they plan it. Mm. So I think it's not bad. Yeah, it's a good way for me to start. Okay, so Joel, uh, how about the uh, parts for this bike? Is it expensive? Uh, parts for this bike, okay. Being a bigger bike, of course, the parts are more expensive than a regular 2B bike. Mm-hmm. So when I felt that the that, uh, Sepang mm-hmm. had to replace the clutch lever, mm-hmm. uh, clutch lever was half broke, was bent. Mm-hmm. So I had to replace the clutch lever and I bought it from the stockies, Honda stockies, that was about $30 just for one side. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Expensive, huh? but it's a really good component because not mm-hmm. like the 2B bikes, when you fall, right, the clutch lever will break. Yeah. Ah. This just bends, Understood. so you can still use it. Other than that, the parts so far, nothing I've changed. Agent really, really stocks um, the most of the components. Mm-hmm. So the foot, the, the rear packs also broke. Because mm-hmm. mm. I stupidly rode the uh, Sepang with billion packs. Again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two screws, I should have taken it out. La, but uh. Uh, I I bought it from AliExpress, thirty bucks. Uh, okay. Mm, replace the pillow foot packs. This one I also bought from AliExpress, thirty bucks. Uh, mm. uh, speaking of parts, how about aftermarket accessories for the CBR one thousand RR? I think um, there are aftermarket parts, mm-hmm. but not as many compared to BMW R one. Uh, because I think overall the sales of the CBR uh, is not as many as mm. the other bikes. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, that's why I know and see from accessories is not as many as other super bikes mm-hmm. mm. but I ordered certain aftermarket parts um, by the full pack to replace mm-hmm. this from China so it's 35 bucks this is the imitation single seat car the original one is like $200 mm-hmm. or $20 on AliExpress oh, okay um, it doesn't come with a quick shifter mm. so the bike surprisingly for a super bike doesn't come with a quick shifter all the other brands come with a quick shifter all the other yeah, true. Suzuki Yamaha mm-hmm. comes with shifter. this doesn't so original OEM from Honda Bunsiu was $550. Oh. Up and down. Auto mm. So it auto blips for you. So when you downshift, you will blip the RPM for you. Mm. So side mirror, it broke also. That was very funny because the side mirror has three parts. Ah. Internally, there's a silver metal piece. Uh-huh. One plastic piece, one plastic piece. One side mirror was 200 plus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you okay or not? No. <laughs> so I should have my friends who who wrote they showed to me that you should have taken out the side mirrors because I just folded uh, it in. Damn. Uh. <laughs> yeah, at least I would say uh, you through that the lessons learned uh, the hard way then you will learn. Yeah lah. So yeah. oh then tail tidy RNG tail tidy. Mm-hmm. Mm. I forgot how much was that hundred plus I think tail tidy. Mm. But mostly you leave it stock lah. Mm-hmm. Mostly, mostly stock. Yeah, mm. mostly stock. Mm. And then yeah. we have to mention about the wrap, uh, liquid moly wrap. Okay. Are you sponsored by liquid moly or what? Uh, <laughs> so it's a more like an ambassador ah, okay. thing going on. So it's, uh, I put the livery, the, the livery, liquid moly mm. livery. The, the livery was designed mostly by custom studio. I mean, I put some input, but most of the work mm-hmm. was done by Man. Manlamba, uh, Manlamba, mm-hmm. yeah. Manlamba from Custom Studio. I think you all did the scooters, the baby. Jeep. Yeah, I mean, yes, I, we keep yeah. hearing Manlamba yeah. name, but we, Manlamba, we want. Then, uh, we would love to interview him. Uh. Yes, but he's very he's busy. Busy, yeah, man. He's busy man. Very, very <laughs> busy man. He's very highly sought after. So, yeah. um, he did the design up. I mm-hmm. think it, it looked really, really good. 
mm-hmm. we did portraits of liquid moly mm-hmm. for a while and, so, uh, we, and then we just promote liquid moly products so if you search my Instagram page, so you can find a link for discounts on liquid moly. Ah, product. okay. And aside from that, I think liquid moly um, provides the engine oil. I wonder when is liquid moly going to uh, sponsor us? And, uh? <laughs> uh, and by the way, this video is not sponsored by liquid moly. Uh, just to get it out there, lah. <laughs> yeah, la, I mean, we are waiting for liquid moly to sponsor us. <laughs> And I like one thing that Joel has done, the trick that Joel has done to his IU unit uh, is Velcro. <laughs> yeah, so so I see a lot of people having a headache about um, mounting the IU unit. Mm-hmm. Where do I mount it? Normally it's stock, it came like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Lock the meter and then when I put the GoPro here, you cannot see because it's the IU unit. Uh-huh. So what I did is just put Velcro. Nice. Ah, cool, this is cool. only a Singaporean problem. <laughs> <laughs> having said that, having said that, I apply this ish, uh, this solution on the Ducati as well because the Ducati I don't really ride it often I, mm. sh- I don't think I need to buy a phone mount for it because they are not uh-huh. exactly cheap ah. so I did was on the IU unit you can see it's a Velcro mm-hmm. uh, my phone has a Velcro ah. <laughs> nice trick man so cool. it's a very cheap and it's super secure it's just GPS <laughs> that's it uh, any problems or issues that um, the bike has given you? Uh, no so only the Kemshin Tiny Channel mm. one complaint is uh, normally people like to complain is because this is a track bike ah. the ABS is very disruptive oh. to disconnect the ABS legit I need to go and pluck out something I don't know where is it like I can't be bothered <laughs> like, I don't break it that high anyway but uh, reviewers in Europe ah. and mm-hmm. I personally experienced even though I didn't really break very very hard the ABS did kick in mm. when the ABS kicking was like chattering and it will automatically release the brake a bit oh. so you may if you over if you jam the brake too hard it may you may overshoot the, the column mm. because of the ABS I see, yeah, I see. So, so ABS is more of a street configuration, huh? Yeah, it's very good for city riding. People and you cut into your lane, you break, at least you won't flip your bike. Okay, so Joel, what's the best memories you have with this bike? The first day I saw it, it was towed here by the shop to my car park, okay. all in plastic wrapping. Uh-huh. They told me, okay, first thousand kilometers, don't 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 break the bike lah. Uh-huh. Third day, I took this to Malacca. <laughs> so, and then the first time I got it on the North South Highway, even though I maintained below 6,000, eh, below 7,000 or 6,000 mm-hmm. RPM, at 6 gear it was still at 170. And that was like, wow, the power compared to my 2B bike for uh-huh. this, wow, huge difference. And that was the best memory because it felt like a new, very new thing. It's not, it's, you did not know some uh, automotive that is affordable to go this fast. Mm. I mean, if you want to get this kind of performance on a car, you really need a very powerful car and expensive. Mm. So, you know, knowing that you can get something like that and moving from a 2B to this is like, when you first get on it and you accelerate, it feels really good. Uh. Mind-blowing. It puts a smile on your face. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You really crave Yeah, you know, you, the way you, you talk about this bike, uh, is so passionate, you know. So passionate. So, yeah, so much passion it. to it. I love this bike. Uh, yeah, really so, bro, w- who would you recommend this bike for? Uh, if a new class 2 uh, person who passed, just passed their class 2, mm-hmm. they want to try a sports bike, they want to try 1000, I think the CBR is a good start. Ah. It's a mm. very easy bike to ride. Mm. Surprising, you, you'll be ready. It looks intimidating. Mm-hmm. It's a thousand cc, but it's super easy to ride. Mm. Really, very easy. I, I think, okay, not as easy as like a two wheel. You just get on and go lah. But yeah. you need to slowly feather the power. You just change it. Also, there are five power modes. Sorry, not three. Five power modes. So if you just put on the power five, it will cut the power by half. Mm. So it's just, it's very soft. The power delivery is very soft at power five, which is the rain mode. So it's very easy to learn on the bike. Mm, I see. And the running posture, I think, compared to a Yamaha or Ducati, is comfortable. You can tour and then you one hand on the throttle, you can just like one hand like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, it's, it's very comfortable. Uh, riders, if you enjoy this video, put in your comments below and whatever. Uh, if you any CBR one thousand RR, the one the RR is like very mouthful. You know, it's like ra 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 ma ra ma ma. Okay, so CBR one thousand RR riders out there, if you have anything else to comment about this bike, put in the comment section below. If you like this uh, uh, video, like and share with your riding car keys, and don't forget to subscribe our, to our videos. And then, no, and then any riders who want to review the bike with us, uh, do get in touch with us on our social media pages. And um, want to thank Mizi for you know doing a. Beer 
hero for us and uh, being our second cameraman. And uh, Joel, thank you once again for sharing Thanks. all three of your Thanks bikes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me. <laughs> all three of your bikes here. Uh, sharing your story and everything. And uh, yeah, that's all uh, for the vlog. And uh, yeah, right but if safe. you do see me, see this bike on the road, just say hi. Uh. Just say yeah. hi. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very notice noticeable bike. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored by Liquid Moly once again. Yeah, and we are hoping Liquid Moly <laughs> will sponsor us one day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, that's it for the vlog. And uh, we will see you next one.